You click there, and a box appears here. E-commerce is a magic trick that repeats millions of times a day. For a peek at what happens in between, we visited its inventor. This is where an Amazon delivery begins, a building that's one third of a mile long. Ordinarily, it's off limits, but not today. Amazon opened closed doors. Steady flow. And opened my eyes. I don't think it's well understood. With a footprint equal to 59 football fields, this Amazon fulfillment center is simply mammoth. We have the packing, the picking, the slamming, the shipping, the receiving. It's home to an army of employees. A little bit over 100. One six-ton pallet-slinging robot. We affectionately call it Robo Stow. And a squad of box-shuffling cyborgs. We like to think of it as a symphony between robots and our great associates. We found a secret at our feet. The floor is covered in tiny QR codes. It's sort of like a chessboard. Eyes in the robot's bellies read the codes and broadcast their position. Choreography that keeps your shipment on time and avoids collisions. They know exactly where to go. Clicking that yellow button sets these robots in motion sometimes within seconds. But your order is not handled by Android alone. The drive units, the Amazon robots, are actually bringing items from where they're stored to Associate so that Associate can pick customer orders and get them ready to ship out. A real life human being boxes every Amazon order. As with every department, there's simply no guesswork in choosing the right box. How do I know which box to pick? Our technology will tell you. The computer tells you. The computer will tell us the perfect size box to fit that item. From there, it's time to slam it. Slam. Fortunately, slam isn't an action. Slam is an Amazon acronym for adding your address and sending your order home. Scan, label, apply, manifest. Orders are constant. Uh, we process thousands and thousands of packages. The exact number is confidential, but we do know that Amazon sales hit a record, $88 billion in 2014. Driven by new same-day delivery and selection that no other retailer can touch. You can't fathom the amount of inventory that we have in the building. It looks like a lot, and it is. Amazon says those shelves are home to one million different items. One million. You think the typical customer realizes that? Probably not. We even spotted a toilet in stock. You name it, we have it. Chaos and a supersonic conveyor are what we expected. Manager Chris Monnet explained that speed isn't everything. The important thing is just the flow. Order levels fluctuate, and yes, there are rush hours. Yet Amazon says its software regulates the line to maintain a steady pace. In order to have one million unique items in this facility, you have to be able to do that. As gaping, gargantuan, gigantic as this fulfillment center is, it's not alone. We have 109 fulfillment centers worldwide. Locally, 59 football fields probably isn't enough either. Our tour guides hinted at expansion, though they wouldn't touch the drone thing. We did build this facility with room to grow. Um, so stay tuned. Amazon has taken heat for claims of harsh conditions at its warehouses. Perhaps that's why it granted us access behind the locked gate and let us interview Diane Ortiz. I'm happy to have you guys. She recently joined Amazon. Diane works 10 hour days, four days a week, is paid more than the national average and disputes the company's critics. I think they'll be in awe, surprised, extremely surprised. The other reason for our visit is you. This invitation is a rare opportunity to give shoppers an insider's view. It's an awesome place to work. To marvel at the robots. We are very excited about the technology. To admire the inventory. One million. And to put a face on the company that with the click of a button. It takes more than that. Delivers A to Z. And I love it. Chris Camorra, Fox 13 News. Now, although Chris got a private tour there, the public can visit Amazon's Fulfillment Center as well. There are two catches, though. First, only select centers are open, and the closest to Tampa is in Tennessee. Second, you're going to have to wait until 2016. You've got to wait till New Year's. Tourists stop for the holiday rush.